An email, are you free? If so, when are you free? Reply, how's next week? Just really, really vague and not getting to the point. Uh, Monday, where shall we meet? So even more questions now. Whereas there's just so many ways that you can avoid this back and forth. And you end up playing email tennis with the person on the other side of you. And it becomes a very, very inefficient way to book a meeting. Now I'm going to go through some tech applications to stop you doing this. I'll start with saying my name is David Benaim. I produce lots of videos about business technology. I focus on a lot of the Microsoft apps from Excel to PowerPoint, but then other non-Microsoft as well, like Zoom or Google Sheets. So if you like what you see, then please feel free to consider subscribing to my channel. We're going to specifically go through booking one-to-one -one meetings externally using these three apps and comparing and contrasting all of them. Now, I have another video where I talk about other types of bookings, like one-to-many outside your organization or other options within your organization, or even one that uses sort of an AI chatbot to find a general time that works. So on the left, you have a service that I really like called Calendly, and on the right, you have another one called doodle.com. Now, uh, Calendly, I think, is the one that looks the nicest. These are both using the free version, so it's not branded and the person can just choose the day and then choose the time slot this does sync to your calendar similarly doodle.com they can choose the day and then they see what times are available based on how your calendar looks uh, you can set all sorts of settings that we'll look at as we go along when you're done you press confirm you press book it enter some basic details and then it sends a calendar invite to both you and the person involved in the meeting so there's a third one that we'll go through, which is Bookings. Bookings comes with Office 365. It's included in all packages with it. You can choose the day, and then here you have what you would like to book. Uh, again, add your details, and then press Book when you're ready. Bookings and Calendly allow you to integrate with Microsoft Teams. Doodle and Calendly allow you to integrate with Zoom and WebEx as well. A quick look at how the invite looks on your calendar so the one on the right this is from doodle.com and the one on the left this is from bookings so the one on the right you can see some key differences firstly the required field includes the person coming to the meeting notice that is my personal email address secondly even though i did have buffer time it is not showing in the invite because we both get the same invite the one on the left this is from bookings and notice that it does have no one in the required field. It just has the email address in the body of the text, as does it have the buffer time in the body of the text as well. And the meeting invite is from 8.55 to 10.05. So here I said five minutes before, five minutes after, and time with customer is 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. I find that so counterintuitive because you're getting your notification on your Outlook, on your mobile phone, that doesn't have all this content unless you open it up. So if you do a buffer time like you would traditionally do of 30 or 60 minutes, then it might create like a three hour meeting instead of a one hour one that you actually need to go through. The one on the right, which is doodle.com, this is very, very similar to what you would get with Calendly. Um, the key difference is Calendly, you have options, you have more text for how to reschedule it, but the idea is pretty much the same. You can click on my bookable calendar. You have to connect it to your Office 365 or your Gmail calendar, and then you can select a few details. So it's quite limited in what you can choose, but it does all the major ones. So you can select the blocks from start to finish, the duration, uh, how long in advance people can book, uh, what the minimum notice period is, and the buffer time. So buffer time is pretty important as I keep mentioning, because it stops people booking two meetings right next to each other side by side. So uh, you can also add more details if you want, like a meeting description and a location, a default location. And this does also sync to Zoom if you add on the Zoom add-in. One thing unique about doodle.com is that it has a completely new different option for booking one meeting with multiple, multiple people who all have different schedules 
with a picker option that allows you to choose the most popular response. Now I cover that in another video, so I'm not gonna go through it here. Let's move on to the other two. So over here, this is Calendly, and Calendly, by default, the free version comes with one meeting. If you have a paid version, like I once used to, you can have multiple meeting types. And the free version with one meeting type uh, has quite a lot of options, but they're set out really, really well. Um, I also like the user interface in Calendly from the customer's perspective really a lot more than the others. So it comes up with a URL that does include your name, uh, as they all do. And then you can say, well, what meeting type is this? Uh, edit a few colors, descriptions, who can book this event? What's the duration, availability, uh, hours? You can have simple ones or advanced. I tend to recommend if you are going to do this, go for the most advanced options and make sure you've covered what they are because some of them might be really, really, really useful. So Tuesday, 14th of July, the earliest I can book is 10, and that is because I have something that finishes at nine. Now, if I were to, for example, put something at 12 till one, then everything would go away from 11, 11.30, 12, 12.30, 12 1, 1 1.30 till two, because I have that one hour buffer time. Now, if I book this slot from Calendly, and I say this is a test here, and then my personal email address, and then I can add guests if I want to optionally. That's quite a nice one. They can get emailed as well about it. Now it has booked it there at that time, and very soon it's going to book it in my Outlook calendar. So going back through the other options here, so invitee questions. So the defaults are first, last name, email, and add guests. And then I added this one. We scheduled to meet here. If not, where would you like to meet? You can add other additional questions if you want to. And they can be multiple lines. They can be radio buttons, check boxes, et cetera, to make sure that they are done well. Uh, notice here, I have now had this booked in my calendar and I can open it. And I can reschedule this now directly from Outlook to another time without going through any application. In fact, I tend to not open Calendly when I'm using this because I manage everything through Outlook. This is uh, what happens. So you can use email addresses, uh, reminders and things. Those are off by default unless you have the premium account. And show cancellation policy. Again, you can say a cancellation policy that cannot cancel a day before, etc confirmation page, including custom links, and collect payments. So I tend to have the free account, so I don't tend to turn it on like that. And you can very easily turn off the whole thing by clicking this to be off, and then the link just doesn't work. So if you are using multiple event types, those are convenient. The other thing you get with premium features, as you do with Doodle, is the ability to brand your own meetings. So if you have custom branding, it doesn't say powered by Calendly uh, like it does here. And you can have your own logos, et cetera, et cetera. You can link it to online meeting providers like in integrations. You'll find here Zoom, Teams, and GoToMeeting. There isn't Google Meets yet, but that is coming. And if you click on one of them, then it will show you the screen. It does say you do need a premium Calendly subscription, but underneath here, it says that they're allowing it for free during an expended period of time right now. So you connect it, it asks you to sign in, and then you can connect them as needed. So I do mine to Teams because that's what I use with my organization. And then you need to go back and edit your meeting location. So back here in the invitee questions, if you have integrated it, then it does allow you to add this custom location. You can reorder them as you need to, and then what I do is I tend to have a custom question which says if you want to meet somewhere else, where would you like to meet? From the customer experience, they can click on a date and then a time. And then when they press confirm, it asks them what their location is or there's this extra question, otherwise, where do you want to meet? And it does automatically generate a link to Teams or Zoom or WebEx if you book it this way. Bookings comes with your Office 365 package. So if you just Google Office 365 sign in, 
Then you can go to the app launcher and just go to all apps and you can see bookings there. So bookings is sort of trying to do the same thing as the other two, but because it comes already paid with an Office 365, there are no restrictions. So you get the full branding experience. You can have multiple event types. In fact, with bookings, you can have multiple booking pages. Here I have three of them and each one can have multiple services underneath them. So I'm going to go through the options and tools that I find are tricky with this um, rather than go through all the options. So in business information, you have your business hours and some extra things, including your logo and booking page. Both of these are at the top layer for the booking calendar that you've set. And here you can connect to Facebook. You can say whether you want them to require a license to apply. Make sure that you say send a meeting invite and untake notify the business email. Those can be quite annoying. Uh, untick allow customers to choose a specified person for the booking. Um, it's unintuitive why, but I'll explain it. It's really, really annoying if that is there. And make sure you tick this option, bookable when staff are free. Now, as I said, underneath this, you have services. So I'm going to go through all staff meeting and then just open this, copy and paste it there. I'm going to show you why it's important to disable that option so here I have that meeting set up. So it says here, select staff, but you can leave it blank and have it choose anyone. And then it doesn't go to anyone's calendar invite, which is so silly. So that's why I say to everyone, make sure that you don't tick the box to allow people to choose anyone. Instead, what I tend to do is make a meeting for every single person in my organization. So meet David. What are the ones that I uh, tend to do here? So yeah, duration, um, buffer time. This is done so badly, I think, and it's very, very counterintuitive. I only put five minutes in before and after for this reason, because if I look at the Outlook invite that I get, starts at 8.55 and finishes at 10.05 for a meeting between, eight, between nine and 10. And that is kind of annoying because it does this buffer time before and after in the actual invite. But although the information is there, how often do people actually open up this and read what's in it? And secondly, you get notified by things from your mobile phone and from Outlook. That should be the actual meeting time. The way that it does that as well is that this person is not a meeting recipient. So I, if I change the meeting time here, the other person has no idea that I've changed it, which I find really, really annoying. So in order to do it, you need to actually go to the bookings calendar and then open this up and edit it like this. And then you can change. And if you change the start time, the end time, the, the buffer time, whatever, you can get them to get the details about it. For me, it's really silly. I hate that this is how you have to manage it because ultimately I want to do things from Outlook. And it's ironic that the one that is inside Office 365 is the one that has the worst connectivity with Outlook. Now, the things that I do like about this, though, is that you can add an online meeting and that creates a Teams meeting for you. Again, though, you do have extra benefits like it is branded. You can also set pricing information and you get reminders and confirmations, which for the only two are only available with a paid subscription. So. You can also, if you want to, actually overwrite the online scheduling options. So all the stuff that you set up in business information or in the booking page can be overwritten for a specific service. Uh, you might have, for example, a specific lunch meeting or something that is only for uh, between certain hours or maybe different time increments, things like that. So you can overwrite that. That is quite nice that you can do that. What I really dislike about this compared to the other two is the fact that you can't manage it from Outlook or, or Google Calendar. You have to manage it through the booking system. The other ones allow you to do it either way because the other person is in the meeting invite. So if you're going to use bookings, then please be aware of those features. All right. So uh, 
that's it for this video. If you liked what you saw, then I have tons more videos on PowerPoint, Excel, Power BI, all types of business applications. Please consider hitting the subscribe button for more content.